What's going on everybody? Welcome back to IYH Studio. This is Sam as always. And I know recruiting season is coming up. So everybody is tidying up their portfolios and putting together their resumes. So in this video, we're taking a look at some examples of good and bad resumes, as well as things that you should do and things that you should definitely stay away from. By the end of this video, we'll be able to make this beautiful layout that your employers will enjoy. So let's get straight into it. Now, there's a lot of under-designed and over-designed resumes in the world. I'll show you guys what I mean. With the under-designed resume, they may look like this or this. Um, now, that might be fine in some other fields, but if we're in a visual field like architecture, landscape architecture, and urban design, we want to be able to show off our ability to format correctly, use white space properly, have hierarchy in our words, characters, and titles, as well as a show design aesthetic overall. We want the text to read, but we don't want to underdesign it so that it's a wall of text that the employer is just going to ignore. With the overdesigned portfolio, you're often trying to do too much, like this one and this one. The reader's eyes doesn't really know where to go, and oftentimes you're overwhelming them with information. So although you'll stand out from the pile and piles of resumes, they might not linger on your resume for way too long. Some examples of things that you should not do on your resume are things like putting your photo as well as a logo, and that takes up a huge chunk of space on the page. Uh, the second thing, and I would say the worst thing, is putting these graphical bars or graphical pie chart progress charts or star charts of basically what your skill sets are. You can't really gauge what your mastery of the program or your soft skill is. And if you guys were hiring managers and you got somebody's resume that had a four out of five star in leadership, what does that really mean? I'll show you guys a better way to do this, but I would say definitely avoid that. I've heard employers strictly say that they skip anybody they see that has something like that. Now, what we want is something like this. Nice, clean, simple, has a design aesthetic. The words are the most important things, but they don't overburden anybody's eyes. And this is something that will still stand out from the pack, but will get all the information across in a clean, concise manner. Let's take a look at how we can create something like this. All right, now that we're in InDesign, we're gonna go ahead and create just a standard eight and a half by 11 page. So if I go to inches, it probably will bring that up for me and no need for facing pages here, which is making one resume document. Um, but what I am going to change here is the margins. We kind of want them to be a little bit bigger than what is suggested here. So I'm gonna turn them up to a 0.625 inch. That'll give us nice wide margins to create that nice white space around our page. All right, now that we're in here, the first thing we're gonna do is create some guides for us. So all we're gonna do is go to layouts, create guides, and for this a simple one, we're gonna do three simple uh, columns, rule of thirds, and hit okay. This is what it's gonna make for us, which is perfect. And the first thing we wanna do is basically put in our title or our name. So I'm gonna go ahead and drag a text box here and pretend we're making this for OutH Studio. Obviously you put your own name here and not OutH Studio. Choose your favorite fonts. Um, again, I'm just gonna use Sophia here as an example. And we're gonna do something that's not too heavy, but we're gonna make this bigger. Now, what I like to do, and you might not do this or do this, it's up to you, is highlight the last name. So I like to just make the first name something a little bit lighter. So I'll use a lighter font. And that's basically the title. We want this to be legible. It's literally your brand. It's how people identify you. It's the single most important thing I would say on your resume is your name. Okay, great. Now that we have that, we're gonna make something on the bottom. You guys know kind of what that is. We're gonna copy that title down, but obviously it's not gonna be such a big font. So we're gonna tone this down to something like a 16 or a 14 even. Um, and we're just gonna type something like what we are trying to do, right? So if it's architectural designer, that's exactly what we're gonna put. And I like to just make this uh, kerning a little bit wider. Um, it gives it a better look in my design or in my opinion. But again, this is totally up to you what you wanna put here. And even if you wanna skip it, I feel like this is totally fine. Um, and then we're gonna copy this one more time down. And this is where I'm gonna put all of our contact information. So it's super important. I'm just gonna make something up. I'm gonna make this something a lot smaller because this doesn't need to read as much as 
uh, a lot of the other information. If they want to search for our contact information, they'll be looking for it. So it's okay if we make this a lot smaller. I'm gonna make that into a 10. So this is our title block basically finished and it's looking pretty good. Um, I feel like this is a little bit dark and the easiest way to make this lighter is to click on it. We're just gonna change the opacity to something like a 75 or even a 50%. We want that to fade back so that it's not taking away from anything. Again, if people want to reach out to us, they can find this on our resume. Okay, now we get to the juicy part of actually designing the resume itself. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and copy the title and drag it somewhere here. And I'm going to make this into something a little bit smaller. So we want to use something like, well, I think 14 is a little bit too small. So we're going to use something like a 16. So I'm going to type in 16 there and we're going to go ahead and make this into a bolder font. So something like a medium. Perfect. And so that is going to be our subtitle. That's going to say something like experience. So experience is here because we really want this to read as the first thing uh, and the most prominent thing on the page. So experience is going to come first. That's basically what the employer is going to look at the most. And so we want to focus on this the most. So I'm going to drag this text box down again by using the alt key. And here I'm going to type in my first experience. Maybe it's a architectural. I don't want to use all caps here. Actually, architectural design intern. Maybe I had an internship at, I don't know, uh, BRK Ing Kells group. I didn't do that, but, um, let's just say I did now, obviously put whatever you, your, uh, experience is here. And I'm going to make this a little bit smaller. So this, we kind of want to use something like a 12. So the difference between this subheading and this subheading up here is that one uses all capital letters and one doesn't. And that already has a very big distinction between the two. And we're starting to create some text hierarchies. So on the bottom of this, I'm just going to go ahead and double click on that. Oh, nope. I'm going to go ahead and double click on the sides so that it snaps to my box. And again, I'm going to copy this down. This time, not as much of a big space. And what I'm going to do here is similar to what we did up here with our contact information. And what we're going to do is make this into 10, similar to what we have up there. And we're going to put how long we have had this experience for. So if this is something like June, 2020 to July, 2021, then I'm going to put that. But I think what's important here is you want to put how long that is. So for example, if this is a one year and one month, internship, I want to put that because people want to see the duration. And so here, if I also make this into 50%, then this really matches with that. And that's exactly what we want here. So if I press preview mode, that's what we're going to get. Now for the body text, we're going to copy this and I'm just going to drag this out a little bit more the text box and make this hit the margin on this side. But here we really just want to explain what we did and be really, really specific about what you did, because that's really what people wants to see is exactly what you did, how you contributed to the company. Uh, so if you're describing, you know, if you did some modeling, you helped a, a project with study guides and study models, and they were able to make a really big decisions that the clients liked, you want to put specific things like that, right? and what kind of things you did. If you put together a set for somebody, you want to make sure that you show that and tell people that that's exactly what you did. So for the body text, we don't really want this to be 50% because again, this is really important information. We want this to read. So here you're just going to describe what you did and that looks pretty good. And so this is basically a body text, right? So this is one section of our experience. Now you might have, I don't know, two or three, uh, different experiences. I'm assuming we won't have too many straight out of school. So I'm gonna go ahead and just copy this down. Make sure you leave ample white space and just something that you think looks good, right? So you have two experiences here and they look good. Perhaps I want these two guys to go down a little bit just so there's a little bit more space separating the duration and my actual body text. Uh, and here it's reading a little bit dark. So I'm going to change this into a lighter text. There we go to again, show a little bit of a hierarchy between the, the title, the company, the duration, as well as the body text. Before we continue, this is the graph from this week. Help a brother out by subscribing and liking this video. 
Really appreciate it. Also leave your comments and questions down in the comments. All right, now that we have the skeleton of what we're trying to do here, basically good. The rest is just a lot of copying, right? So if we're done with our experiences, we can drag that down. Again, make sure you leave a lot of white space between here and here. And maybe this is education. So we wanna put our education here. The third section we're gonna use, and again, we're just going to copy that straight down. Great. The third thing we're gonna do is make sure we are highlighting our recognition, recognition, uh, as well as our awards. Or if you have things like publications, you can put that in there. And I think this is a super important um, section to put in here. So for example, if I got gold medal, in a ULI design competition, then I, I need to make sure that I'm putting this here. What you wanna do is make people intrigued that you have stuff like this. If I want a gold medal at a ULI design competition, then you should probably look at it in my portfolio. I'm gonna include this in my portfolio. You should probably look at it. I think that's, so this is a, kinda like a funnel for people to look into your portfolio. On the left side here, we want to basically show off, you know, other skills. So a lot of this is about software and we don't want to do those cheesy graphics where they have a bar or a, a circle to exemplify how good we are at a certain program. So here I'm going to go ahead and use skills as the heading. And then we're basically going to categorize this into different years of experience. So what I mean is if I have three more years of experience, working with these softwares. So I'm gonna delete that and copy the body text over. So if I have three years of experience working with, I don't know, AutoCAD, uh, Illustrator, etc., then I can basically put that. Let me correct that. Uh, and then we wanna do the same with basically everything else. Okay, so when you're happy with something like that, you can list you know, all your uh, design experiences here and how many years you have for each one of them. They should align with you know, your experiences on the top at least. They cannot align here, but um, try to make them align on the top. And on the bottom, I just like to put things like ha hobbies as well as activities. So again, we're copying that over. Okay, now that we have, you know, typed in our activities and hobbies, it's all looking great. We wanna make sure that, again, this gets enough white space. So just kind of edit this as you would like, right? So that it reads, you can see that maybe we want a little bit more space or a little bit less space on the bottom. So we can do things like drag this around. And this is one of the reasons why we do things in InDesign is because it's so flexible that we can do things like this. This is a great resume to hand to your employers. Nice one page succinct, has everything that you need. The words speak for themselves. And yeah, that's it for this video. I hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, it would be so cool if you guys let me know whether or not this actually helped you land a job. That would be amazing and would completely make my day. But if you did learn something new, please don't hesitate to like and subscribe. It helps me a lot. Leave your comments down in the section below. And I'm also working on making a website where I can upload all these formats for you guys. So be on the lookout for that. Other than that, I'll see you guys in the next one.